Kerala is yet again facing an outbreak of the deadly Nipah virus which has already claimed two lives in the state's Koiko district. This is the fourth outbreak in the state since 2018. Kerala Health Minister Veena George has said that the state is aiming for proactive detection of infection and has already initiated precautionary measures. The outbreak has also prompted the central government to intensify surveillance on bats and deploy a five-member health ministry team to support state authorities. But what is this virus all about? According to the World Health Organization, Nipah virus infection is a zoonotic illness transmitted from animals like pigs and fruit bats to humans. This virus can also be transmitted through contaminated food and through contact with an infected person. So, how does one know if they have contracted the virus? People who contract the virus sometimes show no noticeable symptoms, while others show signs of acute respiratory problems. In severe cases, a Nipah infection can result in fetal encephalitis, a serious condition that affects the brain. What is so deadly about the virus? Since there is no medicine or vaccine available to treat the infection, the mortality rate among those who contract the virus is high, making this rare virus a deadly one. Treatment is limited to managing symptoms and supportive care. To take a closer look at the situation of Kerala and to understand how the state is tackling this deadly virus's impact, so South connected with Dr. Jacob John, an eminent virologist and former head of the Virology Research Centre of Indian Council of Medical Research. With microbes like Nipah, COVID getting reported first from Kerala, the state has often been criticised for being a hotbed of infections. But Dr. John believes differently. He said, Nipah has been periodically reported since the early 2000s in West Bengal. With regard to COVID, the epidemiology was different in Kerala because of the vigorous approach taken by the state to flatten the epidemic curve. He adds, So it is India as a whole, not merely Kerala, that is widely known as a museum or zoo of exotic diseases. Kerala stands out because of our talent, knowledge, education, literacy, high-quality healthcare, but yet people do not demand public health. Kerala has also been highly praised when it comes to the state's healthcare system. Dr. John argues that the state has excellent public sector hospitals, primary health centres and also several quality private sector hospitals, all widely distributed. But community-level control of communicable diseases is only possible through public health, through mitigation of environmental and societal determinants or risk factors of diseases. Now, this falls outside the lines of healthcare and belongs to the public health system. He clarifies that while India spends about 3% of GDP on healthcare, it isn't enough and that the public health system may need another 3%. Dr. John said that both the central and state governments avoid spending on the public health system because healthcare personnel, the public and media do not demand for the establishment of public health systems. When asked if he thinks there is a gap between what Kerala projects itself and the reality on the ground when it comes to the healthcare system, Dr. John questioned, Kerala is no better or no worse than neighbouring states. Unless one understands reality, one may think that everything is fine. Let statistics speak. But where are the statistics? Where is the system that collects and analyses and publishes reliable statistics? It is the fourth outbreak of this deadly virus in the state's Koiko district. When asked if the authorities have been complacent, Dr. John said, What did Kerala do during intervals between episodes of Nipah disease? Kerala is very efficient in reacting to crisis. Proactive risk assessment and risk mitigation is required if you want to be well prepared anytime. The country has reached the moon and is on the way to the sun. But does Dr. John think India's health infrastructure has matched up to the advances in space science? He stresses on the importance of a system. He says, Health management requires necessarily public health and health care. Health care is actually disease care. Protecting health and controlling communicable diseases is the function of public health. If we did not have the space department, we could not have sent satellites of explorer missions to Moon, Mars and Sun. It is the system that is crucial. To read the entire interview with Dr. Jacob John, please go to the description section. This is Afreen Hussain and you are watching India Today So South.